Oh, hi. Caught me. How you doing, guys? Man, glad to have you. I'm doing a, a show today about um, loops. Now, before, before all you rockers and uh, heavy metal guys change the channel and start watching Jersey Shore, um, this is applicable to everything because you can take your you can take live drums, print them to a stereo track, and do these techniques, and, and then add that back into your original sound and get some really cool stuff. It's, it's and it's and a lot of these techniques are applicable to uh, uh, auxes where you do an aux on all the tracks or whatever, whatever. But I'm using loops to kind of demonstrate it because that's kind of how I came up with a lot of this stuff. Well, I'm just going to jump right in because I think it's self-explanatory. So I've got this loop here. I've made uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've made six copies of it. And so all of these are the same loop. They're identical, but we're gonna, we're gonna apply different techniques. I've got all these muted except for one. So guys, this is, this is the loop. Let's get a little color by using the, the, the Waves Kramer MPX. With it. That's, that's pretty cool. Now another one I like, they're different. They're both incredibly good, but they're just different. Uh, this is the um, UAD ATR-102. With it. One of the things I like to do with the um, tape emulators is I like to add a little bit of um, a little bit of this, a little bit of color and a little bit of high end. So this is the new waves HEQ. I'm adding, if you notice right here, I'm adding 370% of tonal harmonic distortion, and looks like I'm shelving at 10k, about 2.75. Okay, this is without it. I with it. Without. With. Okay, so let's start there. Now, um, we've made a copy right here, this, this, this guy here, and, and on this track, if you notice, the high end wasn't quite right, so what I've done, I made a copy of the track, And then uh, I'm rolling off everything below 6K. So now we've got this. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna enhance that top end just a little bit. This is a, another Kramer HLS. It's, it's got a color to it I like for this. So this is, um, this is with it. But you could use anything. You could use E6. You could use um, just any any nice sweet top end EQ. And then um, and then I want to um, I want to widen it a little bit. So um, I'm going to add this chorus. Okay. Why are we doing that, Dave? Well, here's our original. Now watch, watch the little cursor. I'm going to add this in after one time three. Without it. With it. And this is what the chorus is doing. This is without the chorus. With it. Okay. Now, I want to get a little bit of mid-range in there. So, uh, it, it's not pumping like I'd like. So I'm here again. I'm putting the, I'm putting the F2, uh, rolling off a little sub, rolling off a little top, and then I'm adding an, the SPL. And so now this is what I've got. Just this track. Now let's add that to our original. With it.
without it. Now, uh, I'm going to save this one. This one, uh, I'm going to go to this one. Now, now I'm going to add a little bit of low end. We're going to roll off everything above 210 cycles. So let me make sure we're only monitoring the one track. So that's my low end. Don't laugh, but this little EQ. I'm not even sure they make it anymore. I, I, I saved it because it, it's just, it just, anything from about 100 cycles down, anything about 80 cycles down, I love this old, old, old Digi EQ. So I've got it set on 70. Let me exaggerate it for you. We can we can try a little R base if we want. Okay, now when I add that back in to the original. Without it. Ooh, nice. Okay. Now what I've done here is I've set up trigger. I'm gonna add some snaps. Now, how can you do that? Um, let's, let, let's see what Trigger's doing. Okay, that's horrible. Okay, but, but check this. Let's take the high pass filter. You can do this before it gets to the, to the trigger. So let's put a high pass filter. Now I'm gonna raise my input because because I lowered I lowered the volume. Now what I can do is I can emphasize um, the frequencies for the snare. Okay, so now we got. We've extracted just the snare out of the loop to trigger with. Sometimes you want a little more stereoness out of the loop, like maybe, uh, and, and, and different things are going to be affected by the stereo wideners. I like the loops. I like this one. It's um, it's by uh, Digi. It's it's uh, one of their uh, Air series, and uh, this is a preset. Uh, I could have modified a preset, but I named it. I named it me. But I'll let you look at it real quick. So you can copy it. Uh, I panned it a little bit because I liked it better that way. Okay, so here's here's the loop without it. With it. Okay, so now let's add that back into the original. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to add these back in one at a time so you can kind of get a vibe for what they're doing. Okay, here we go. Here's, here's our original loop. Add the high end. I'm going to add the smack. Sub. And then the snaps. Okay, round of applause for me. Um, but what I'm telling you guys is, is 
these are techniques that can be applicable to a lot of different situations. It's a, it's a modified form of, of paralleling. You've heard parallel compression. Well, this is kind of like parallel everything. And then, and then once you've got the high end isolated, you can do unique things to just that. You can chorus it. You can put just reverb on it. Uh, if you wanted a little bit of reverb on the loop for the snare, you could, you could uh, use another snare sample instead of the snaps, do what we did to isolate it, and then send that to a reverb and only have the reverb play, not the original sound, so that would add reverb to your snare. If you wanted it to be generated by your snare, you could sample just the snare, but not play it, not, not add it back in, just add the reverb that it generates back in. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this technique, and it's applicable to every, um, I don't know why I can't say this word. Herb always makes fun of me. Genre. Is that right, Will? Genre. Oh, genre. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, man, we got a French guy on the show today, and I can't even pronounce that. But anyway, you know, as always, uh, I'm, I'm always inter interested to see how you guys adapt and use some of these things. And, and it helps me learn, too. So if you think of something, a unique way to use this, let me know. But you can use it with vocals. You can separate the high end off of the vocal and add that back in with chorus to the lead vocal on Touch My Body. I have to ask Jason, because we did that together, Mariah Carey. I think, I think we did that. I think I did that on, on that song. I can't remember. But, but I'm, I'm telling you, you can, you, can, you can use these techniques for a lot of different things. All right, back to you, Dave.